What's up guys, Sean here, and today we're gonna talk about Captain Marvel. It's finally here. The first Marvel MCU female, strong female led superhero movie. And I cannot tell you guys how excited I am about it. We as a society need strong female led superhero movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We need it. We, I, I don't know how we're even functioning without it. I can't believe it took this long. It's a little bit sexist that it did take this long. But now that it's here, I'm excited for it because we need it as a society. Did, did you know Donald Trump is president? I, I think that's what really I'm, I'm getting at here. Donald Trump is president and we need Captain Marvel so that people will know that Donald Trump is president and that's not okay. Are you excited yet? All joking aside, there is way too much nonsense surrounding this movie. And that nonsense is not exclusive to the SJW side. The anti-SJW side is going insane over this movie as well. And mostly, it's completely unwarranted. I've seen video after video proclaiming that Captain Marvel is going to be the start of the SJW MCU. I'm not trying to throw shade at all of the content creators that are making videos about this because I do get it. The first trailer was pretty generic, a lot of people voiced their concerns about the movie, and Brie Larson and the people at Marvel Studios decided it would be a good idea to attack the fans as sexist. We've seen this before with other movies. Those movies a lot of the time turn out to be awful. People think of The Last Jedi, they think of that awful Ghostbusters trailer which led to the awful Ghostbusters movie. So I get that component of it, and I get why you would make videos about that. And I even get the people who are predisposed to hate Captain Marvel as a character due to how she's presented in current Marvel comic books. For those of you who don't know, Marvel has basically become SJW Marvel in the comics. They've changed a lot of the characters, including Captain Marvel, and they've essentially made Captain Marvel the face of SJW Marvel comics. They cut off all her hair, they draw her like a dude, she's always angry, she has really boring, overtly political storylines, and nobody wants her as the face of Marvel. Spider-Man is the face of Marvel. That's who people want, that's who they want to read about. They don't want to read about this angry woman that's drawn to look like a dude. So I get that. And it's not like there aren't better versions of this character from the comic books to draw on. Like, most people love the 1990s X-Men series. Most people consider Rogue in that animated series as their favorite depiction of that character on screen. But what a lot of you might not realize is that version of Rogue, the reason her personality is like that, is because in comic continuity, that version of Rogue absorbed Miss Marvel, who is now Captain Marvel, for a really long time, and that's why she has the power to fly, that's why she's nearly indestructible, that's why she has super strength. So a lot of people do actually like a version of Captain Marvel, just not the version of Captain Marvel that's currently running in the comic books. But what people need to realize is that the movies aren't the comic books. They're not going to rip the worst version of the character, the version that everybody hates that sells no books, and put that on screen. They're likely to rip from a more popular version of Captain Marvel and put that on screen, or rip components of that and kind of do their own thing. That's what they do with every character. They don't just take whatever is existing in the comic books and put it on screen. In fact, comic books tend to change after movies come out, not the other way around. Now the next reason a lot of people are upset is Brie Larson. Brie Larson has done quite a number of interviews where she's expressed her desire to make this film as like a feminist exercise. She also said that she wanted more diversity. She didn't want so many white film critics asking her questions at her press junkets. And she also didn't handle criticism in the past for a different movie that bombed at the box office by saying, I didn't make this movie to satisfy white men. Something to that effect. Again, none of this stuff is cool. I get why people are upset by it. But this is not atypical for actors and not atypical for actors in the MCU. Chris Evans is a huge SJW. He actually really genuinely hates Ben Shapiro. You have all these other Marvel actors that have appeared in anti-Trump ads, Rock the Vote ads, all this politically correct nonsense. On Tuesday, November 8th, this country will make one of the most important. The most important. The most important decisions in its history. 
You're a racist, abusive coward who could permanently damage the fabric of our society. See, this isn't just an election, it's a tipping point. For the country. Tell the world that you care about what happens to it. And if you do vote and help protect this country from fear and ignorance, Mark will do a nude scene in his next movie. Save the day. Make Mark be naked. By making your mark on November 8th. They should just vote because it matters, you know? Don't you think? We're all in this together. I mean, even Chris Hemsworth, the mighty Thor himself, when Atomic Blonde came out, released a statement about how Charlize Theron should be the next James Bond, how we need a female James Bond. So the idea that SJWs in the MCU are going to somehow make the movies worse, if that were true, it probably would have happened already. But if you're on board with the new direction of Thor, which I'm totally on board with, and you're on board with the current direction of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, then chances are you're allowing yourself to separate the politics of the people involved in the making of the film from your judgment on the quality of the product. And that's a good thing. We should all strive to do that. Look, maybe I'm just numb to this kind of nonsense from actors because I've seen it so many times before. Maybe you guys feel differently. Maybe you disagree. Again, it's just my opinion, so feel free to disagree if you want. Although you'd be wrong because my opinion is clearly the best opinion, but feel free to try to convince me in the comments down below. But this just doesn't seem that unusual to me. And I'm sorry to say it, I can't get on board with all this hate for this movie, at least until after it comes out. I'm also not gonna call Brie Larson a bad actress because I don't agree with her politics. If you've seen Room, her and a child carry that movie for an hour by themselves. It's actually amazing, and I definitely recommend you watch it on Netflix or Amazon. Wherever it's available, check that movie out. Tell me she's a bad actress after watching that. War is a universal language. I know a renegade soldier when I see one. Never occurred to me that one might come from above. The next thing I want to get into is the trailer. I've watched the trailer multiple times in preparation for this video, and I completely agree with people who think it's not a good trailer. It's really generic, but that's not unusual from what we've seen from Marvel in the past. You wouldn't know it based on the reaction at the time, especially the reaction that we got from Black Twitter, but Black Panther's trailers were incredibly generic. I have seen gods fly. I've seen men build weapons that I couldn't even imagine. Uh. War is a universal language. I know a renegade soldier when I see one. But the movie still turned out to be good. I think what this actually comes down to is not the quality of the movie, but Marvel's marketing strategy. Essentially, they released two types of trailers. One is if they believe that their target audience knows what's going on, they release a good trailer, which is a trailer steeped deep in continuity. For examples of this, I cite Civil War. And Infinity War. Dread it. Run from it. Destiny still arrives. These trailers are works of art, but the reason they work is because Marvel Studios trust that you, the audience, know what's going on. So they produce a trailer that's steeped in continuity that somebody who's never seen a Marvel movie would be really confused about, and they don't waste any time explaining anything. However, the reason that the Black Panther and the Captain Marvel trailers were so generic is because Marvel doesn't think you know what's going on. Most of the trailer is exposition, it's trying to bring you into this world, trying to hook you into it, and it comes off to the masses as boring. Because when a trailer is steeped in continuity, it feels like it's for the fans, because in a lot of ways, it is for the fans. But when a trailer's trying to introduce you to everything, it kind of feels like you're being talked down to, like you're too dumb to get it. Like, why are they explaining so much in the trailer? Now, I don't find this marketing very interesting, but there's really nothing to freak out for. Even this segment, which has probably caused the most backlash. <laughs> No, I you see that? It said a hero, but first it said her, so that you know it's a woman superhero. Outrage. Shock. How horrible. 
I don't care. I'm sorry, I'm just not gonna freak out about that. It's not gonna happen. Obviously part of this is to be like a feminist callback. It's like her, it's a woman hero, but it also makes perfect sense in the continuity of the trailer. Remember, it's well established in this trailer that we're dealing with a character that has amnesia. I keep having these memories. I see flashes. I think I had a life here. So finding out what makes her makes sense because she's actually finding out who she is throughout the course of the movie, or at least that's what's being sold to us. It also makes sense as a sentence, finding out what makes her a hero. Sorry to break it to you guys, but you're way overreacting to this trailer. Calm down, it's not that big a deal. Look, should the studio have attacked the fans? No. Should Rotten Tomatoes be deleting reviews and removing the portion of their website where fans vote on whether or not they actually want to see a movie? No. But can we not become reactionaries? Can we not become alarmists? Can we not become counter SJWs? Can we not overreact to things that aren't even out yet that we haven't even seen? Look, chances are based on Marvel's track record, the movie will range from decent to good. It won't be great, it won't be awful, and even if it is bad, there's another movie called Avengers Endgame where the Russos will tweak the character and make her better because that's what the Russos do. If both those iterations of Captain Marvel turn out to be awful, then sound the alarm. Then the SJW Marvel might be coming. But until such a point where that occurs, we're 20 movies in and things are going pretty well. Let's not overreact. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. If you like this video, then please show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content, ring the bell to actually, you know, see when I post videos because apparently subscriptions don't mean anything. Oh God, I'm one of those creators that are telling you to ring the bell. Support me via PayPal, Subscribestar, or Patreon. This has been me talking about Captain Marvel. Till next time.